welcome to this first episode of Behind the Coach, brought to you with Jiminy in partnership with Sales Impact Academy. My name is Tom Lavery. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Jiminy. We're a conversation intelligence platform that helps companies grow faster. Uh, Sales Impact Academy is the world's leading go-to-market learning platform. Um, so we're super excited to bring you this 10-part series where I get the fun job of chatting to SIA's leading coaches about their courses, their expertise and experiences, understanding something they love, try and avoid. And on this first episode, we're talking to Mark Colgan, who is the CEO and co-founder of Speak On Podcast. He has experience in recruitment, marketing, sales, coaching and leadership, and he leads the SIA course for outbound prospecting. Awesome. And welcome to the show, Mark. Great to have you on. Cheers, Tom. Really good to be here. Looking forward to it. Yeah, no, it's good to see you again. It's been a while, for sure. It has. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, yeah, before um, the guys are researching about the show, and uh, what we like to do is find out a little fun fact. Uh, and the fun fact that the guys found out about you was that, uh, that you guys plant a tree for every meeting you book uh, on Speak On Podcast, right? Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah, we which do. Is amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's awesome. It's a, it's a really positive business to be in. So we book interviews for our customers. So that's already like a cause for celebration. And then we add the fact that we pledge a dollar for every interview. So we're close to a thousand trees that we planted in South America, Southeast Asia, uh, and some in Europe as well. So it's really nice to give back in that way too. Awesome. And what, how did it, where do the locations come from? How does that get picked? Uh, you know, yeah, so are? every time we hit the next 100 interviews books, we just ask mm-hmm. the person who did that, that 100th interview to mm-hmm. pick and uh, some of them pick in the in the countries that where they live in and others pick uh, just in uh, in random places but we leave it up to the team so they get a bit of a choice oh awesome that's great i love that so such a great initiative so how did the how did the sia course come about you know the whole outbound and prospecting how did you get involved in that yeah sure i was introduced to alex by a couple of mutual connections because i'd been working for a company that focused on lead research and data enrichment and I was fortunate enough to be in the position to look at the hundreds of campaigns that our customers were running. It wasn't a service that we offered, but it made sense for me to go in, take a look, see where they could improve uh, across their SDRs. And then basically they become more stickier customers for me because they're getting results with the data that we're giving them. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, after, after somebody made that introduction to Alex, uh, the rest was history. We jumped on, did the first run of the course together. And then I took it over, ran it solo for a couple of months and then Recently, I think we're on our fir- uh, fourth time now to have two, two people, one in the US, one in the UK, different experiences, different stages of life, bring in as much knowledge together for outbound prospecting as we can. Cool. And you're running one today, right? So- yeah. Yeah. Class four. Class four is oh. uh, uh, automated emails and follow ups, I believe, today. Oh, well, I better hurry up then and ask you these, <laughs> these questions so we get on. So getting into the, the nitty gritty to kind of share with the sales community. So first, first kind of question was something that you love, you know, that you can share about outbound prospecting or around the course. Yeah. So for me, uh, with what I love about outbound prospecting is it's the quickest way to get to know your target market and your ideal customers. You're on the front line having conversations with them day in, day out. And if you're curious, which is one of the best qualities you can be as an SDR, or if you're in the outbound role, you'll be able to soak up as much of that information as a sponge and then regurgitate it when you're having conversations with people in an articulate way that helps position you as the trusted advisor and not the the salesperson with commission breath trying to sell something. Commission breath. I've never heard <laughs> I've never heard that one before, but you know, that can be quite transparent. I'm sure you've seen it over the years. You do have to advise and consult these days, I think. You do. People want, you, really you, have do. To, you have to give and give before you get back. I think that's mm-hmm. just the way it's changed over the last decade, you know? Yeah, I, I think so, Tom. And then also the, uh, the buyers have got access to so much more data. So they've already looked at your competitors. They've already looked at all the other alternative options as well. So we still buy from humans at the end of the day, and they want to buy from people that they know, like, and trust. And, and that's your job. Frontline sales doing prospecting is, is to be that known, liked, and trusted person. Yeah. And I think, you know, sometimes it's, it's such an underrated gig, as in, like, it's, it's one of the hardest parts of the sales process, without yeah. a doubt. And uh, to, to constantly repeat it and then be good at it and stay at it consistently, I think, is... Uh, such a challenge and we just underestimated a little bit how how tough it is you know yeah definitely I, I say that you, you they usually say your first job is when you cut your teeth but my first job was a BDR and I smashed my teeth into that role it was 
boiler room type work. And it was the days where you would uh, go up to an office block and walk in and speak to the receptionist and try and get past the gatekeeper physically. Um, so those, those are good days to learn sales. A lot of those tactics aren't as effective anymore, but it gives you the thicker skin ever. And that served me well throughout my career. Yeah, I'm going to sound really old now because I was talking about this to someone the other day, but obviously there was less companies about and it was less noisy. So before the days of BDR and SDR, but I remember like I would go into the office in the morning, like make an hour of phone calls, run out to a meeting, come back, make more phone calls, run out to another meeting because obviously yeah. everything was done face to face. And that was yeah. even selling software. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to do your own prospecting in between meetings, uh, which is like when I tell the team about that, they like, you know what? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I, I had the same. I was in recruitment. So I was interviewing candidates and then trying to find people to uh, companies that were recruiting. So, yeah, very similar. It's all moved on. And uh, so next thing on this is something uh, that you, you've tried recently, could be with your team or on the course that you'd, you'd like to share. Yeah. So I'd say the biggest thing that we've tried recently and then we teach in the course is to use a very soft call to action in that first email that you're sending out. Mm -hmm. we, we do our best to remind the, uh, the, the learners that you're not booking a meeting, you're not closing a deal in by using cold email. What you're really doing is starting a conversation. Um, so the best way to start that conversation is just like it would be if you were uh, going on a date you wouldn't ask somebody to marry you at the end of that date or in the first few minutes you would ask questions and that's what we advocate for in in especially in emails is asking these open uh, questions or, or softer questions such as would you be open to learning more does this sound of interest to you would you like to find out more information about this um, rather than saying are you free at 2 p.m on monday um, that's that's one thing that i encourage everybody to try and just test it see if it see if it works and gets you the results that we're seeing across all the learners yeah i love that analogy <laughs> in terms of asking <laughs> to get married but um yeah it's, it's just part of the process right uh, you know someone prefers to be communicated to in a certain way and you're you're almost trying to find out how how and why you can start start communicating with them and start a conversation yeah. I, I also say, Tom, to use a different analogy that you um, you can't sell uh, car insurance to someone who doesn't have a car. So part of the point of prospecting is finding out if the if people have the challenge that your product or service can help them overcome, because there's no point really going into that direct pitch um, if you haven't understood whether it's a challenge or a priority for them right now. Um, so that, again, uh, using that softer call to action will help you start more conversations for you to qualify in or out, because uh, equally those are important. Yeah, they might they might have the challenge as well, but it it depends when the timing of that challenge comes up, right? Because mm -hmm. that, that timing is so crucial, um, you know, in terms of being able to nurture it along. Awesome, and I love this one at the end when we do this behind the coach. But something you would uh, avoid? Yeah, I would avoid being bland and like everybody else. Uh, one one of the other things that both Sarah and I say throughout the course is don't be afraid to put your your personality in, and and don't be afraid mm -hmm. to be a little bit different. So. An example being a very simple example, when you're setting that meeting uh, for the, the qualification call or the a meeting with the AE, for example, use emojis in the subject line or use emojis in the meeting title because it's going to stand out in their inbox I, and, and in their calendar. I bet if I looked at your calendar, Tom, or you looked at mine, there's going to be lots of meetings and things booked in, um, but there's only going to be one or two that has the emoji and that might be you. Um, record video, use your personality. Um, so I think avoid just going with a status quo and uh, don't be afraid to try something new. Yeah, and I, I think that's in business anyway, and you're talking about applying it to prospecting, but you know, people, I think it's changing, but people naturally put this kind of business face on things. That, oh, I'm, I'm at work, mm -hmm. so I, I've got to behave in a certain way or act in a certain way, and it kind of stops them being creative and maybe even yeah. themselves, you know? Yeah, I, I always say though, don't, don't do anything too crazy. Like if, uh, if your mum, your aunt, your gran or your dad had to see what you did, they wouldn't be embarrassed about it. But as long as it's safe, it's within the brand guidelines. Just don't be afraid of putting your personality in. Yeah, you've got to control those gifts or gifs which, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, put, you put into emails. Oh, awesome. That's great. And so um, if uh, people, first of all, want to find out about the course or find about the course with SIA, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, sure. They can check it out at salesimpact.io. It's the best place to visit the, uh, the course. Um, and you can find the courses on the course catalogue there. 
cool and uh, speak on podcast i know it's fairly new and you guys are going great guns but uh what's next in in that chapter and how can people find out about you there yeah so uh for speak on podcast we've uh, grown from zero to almost 20 people in just over a year so it's been quite a fun mm-hmm. journey um we're just looking forward to working with more businesses and coaches and consultants who want to speak on podcasts and uh, they can reach out to me at speakonpodcast.com uh, to find out more awesome that's great awesome mark well look i really appreciate the chat i know you got to run off to the the course now and go do it ironically but uh yeah, it was an absolute pleasure to chat to you and really appreciate you uh, sharing your time with us. Likewise, Tom. Great to speak again. Speak to you soon. See ya. All right. Cheers, Mark. Bye. See ya. Bye.